September 15th, 2019. Buckwheat's up in flower here in the later plantings. Holy basil is nearly gone by from flower. It's mostly going straight to seed. We're gonna have to harvest a bunch of that so we can make some uh, infusions, tinctures, etc. And save lots of seed for next year because I want a field of that. Other various things are doing okay. I guess I should just show you quick. I know the weeds are way overgrown in this block, but uh, the ginger's doing really well in here. And uh, I'm gonna dig these up and pot them back into the greenhouse for next year instead of selling them. And uh, really expand my ginger production. Now that I know how well it does in the greenhouse, I probably won't pull it out of the greenhouse in the summer. I'll probably just do it up in planters in there and let it thrive. Sweet potatoes are doing well under there. Also, you can see vines, <clears throat> and there are potatoes. I probably could find one of these without too much trouble. Yeah, there you go. So we got sweet potatoes coming on under there, so that's good to see. I gotta save seeds off of this for the birds and the mice and other creatures get to it. And uh, what inspired me to snag the camera was all the butterflies that were and moths that were out here. A minute ago. Here we go. There's an interesting one. In, uh, in these Hawaiian orange marigolds. I know. Delayed finished sentence. <laughs> There's a monarch. And of course, there's bumblebees all through it as well. And I just saw another moth down here. Oh, there's another monarch. Two monarchs. Two monarchs and a bumblebee. Those monarchs are such beautiful butterflies. Oh, look at them going in after the nectar. That long tongue. for lack of steadiness. A pretty good amount of zoom here. Freehand. So yeah, so that's cool to watch. So I've uh, been working on getting my, uh, oh, we got a honeybee in a marigold. That's the first I've seen that this year or at all. Awesome. I didn't know they were getting in here at all. Well, that's fantastic news. I had not seen a single honeybee in any of this yet. I was very surprised to see one in here. But that's cool. Can you imagine what calendula honey must taste like? Oh, I bet that's good. There's the sun. Things are warming up quick. Yeah, there's another honeybee and another. Wow, they are in this. Very interesting. Well, I did a foliar feed about through. Wow, they're all through it. Okay. I did a foliar feed in here about three days ago. And uh, actually, you can see that uh, basil seems to be greening up and taking off again. I, I think I balanced out the nutritional imbalance in here. And uh, it looks like maybe that increased the uh, sugar content of the nectar on these flowers. And maybe that's why the honeybees are coming into it now. Because I have not seen them in here before. Of course, also in with this calendula, there are jalapeno peppers. And uh, in the under, 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 under canopy, there's also rosemary which come fall will have uh, more light come back to them and be able to uh, take off once the frost wipes other stuff out. And I'll probably come back in and dig some of those up and uh, do like a compressed winterization of them. I'm really stoked to see honeybees in here. I've never seen honeybees in the calendula before. 
so that's awesome. I was starting to wonder if the calendula had any value to honeybees. I know it does to the wild pollinators like bumblebees. I see them in here all the time. But I am very happy to see honeybees all through the calendula. Ah, that's sweet. Of course there are some in the buckwheat too, but they hit that more in the earlier part of the day than they do in the later part of the day. One of my viewers in one of my videos uh, was saying that the buckwheat dries out later in the day and so they usually go for it more in the morning. Um, so thanks for the tip on that. I can't remember the channel name, but thank you. Uh, let's go take a look at some, uh, some pollinator stuff quick and just see what the honeybees are working. We know they're in the goldenrod. There's a few other species that they're in that I noticed. We'll go have a look. And of course we can't go look at all the flowers that are going into without stopping at the hives and checking out the activity. Nice uh, warm day, finally cleared out and warmed up a bit here again and uh, the honeybees are running full tilt. Lots of inbound, outbound traffic, lots of pollen and nectar coming back in and hopefully they're filling up some more of those supers up top. Okay, so uh, this is an area I started doing some clearing in. The new farm roadway to the back is going to come through here. So there's a whole bunch of different uh, like uh, reclaimer type species in here. Uh, thistles and also goldenrod and clovers and stuff. But I noticed the honeybees have been in here. They're in these thistles which we'll go over and look at some more of these thistles in a minute. They're in that. I saw some in this uh, white stuff before. I think that might be bone set, but I could be wrong on that. I might have that uh, flower species wrong. And of course they're in the goldenrod, hot and heavy. Multiple bees per plant and in some cases per flower cluster. Oh yeah, and you can see them, them and all the smaller uh, wild pollinators in this, uh, what I think might be bone set. So they're working all of that. And then uh, there's more of this thistle here. And I know I was seeing them in that. Uh, hmm. See if I can find any now. Yeah, there you go. Interesting thing is they're visiting flowers that appear to be closed. Like these flowers haven't opened yet. Um, so maybe uh, nectar and pollen are only available on these flowers before they turn into these uh, puffball things. I guess that would make sense since these are basically dried seed. Just interesting, you usually don't see uh, bees visiting flowers that appear closed. But maybe that is actually uh, partially open or something. I don't know a lot about uh, thistles in general or specifically anything about this thistle species. Uh, behind the thistles, of course, you see all sorts of activity in the goldenrod. Honeybees, bumblebees, all sorts of wild pollinators. So. Uh, they're all through everything in here. Oh, and here comes a little breeze. <laughs> Blowing all those seeds through. Uh, isn't nature beautiful? I hate when those things get all over me. They stick to you. But uh, it's pretty cool that a plant can come up with a way to f figure out a way to make its seed fly to a new location a little parachute that'll ride thousands of miles sometimes. Pretty impressive. Pretty ingenious for uh, a plant that's fixed in one place. Of course, the honeybees are also still in the jewelweed, as are all the other pollinators. Bumblebees, goldenrod right here, next to it. These huge patches of jewelweed weren't here uh, even last year. I don't know what uh, 
cause this to propagate and take over. I guess since we had such a wet season, I'm sure that was a factor. Um, I don't remember exactly what other species were in here, but they must have been outcompeted by the uh, the jewel weed with all the, uh, the rain. We've had a, a reasonable moisture season for a change, which is nice. But it's definitely paying off for the pollinators. Lots of flowers, lots of real healthy flowers, full bloom, nice uh, nectar production. Nectars aren't uh, drying out. Plants aren't drying out. Very happy. Let's see what else we got. This is that patch of goldenrod down by the pond. Those flowers are literally like vibrating and shaking with pollinators landing and taking off and going through them. favorite things to watch the dragonflies patrolling oh the dragonflies are cool out here I don't know how well you can see them on camera here but we got monster dragonflies patrolling looking for insects to eat just running their grid patterns for some reason they're always working this section of field when I see him out. And I hope you can see those guys. See if I can get one against the skyline. Let me move to a different position. We'll see if we can. They're so fast, it's really hard to uh, zoom and focus and track them. Anyway, I hope you can see them. Just as they're, uh, they're really interesting to watch, too. They're all over the place out here doing their thing. It's a beautiful world we live in. Full of complexity and diversity and life. There you go. I think he came pretty close. And of course the crickets are singing. So peaceful out here this time of year. Well, this time of year the flowers just don't cease. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but I think that that white flower, white flower plant is in the Asterococci family. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Asteracache? I don't know. Anyway, I think it is. I don't know uh, too much about it, but uh, seems to be quite a bit of it out here. And I don't see a tremendous amount of bee activity in it from honeybee standpoint, but I do see uh, bumblebees in and out of it and some of the other wild pollinators. And we'll see what else we can find. Here we go. In the edge of the excuse me, in the edge of the wood line. We got some aster here. I wish there were ten thousand more of these in this field. Uh, the few that come through every year are just beautiful. This color purple is beautiful. And I don't see any bees in this particular one at the moment. Ah. Well now we do, don't we? Not a honeybee, but uh 
a wild pollinator of some sort. Going for it. <laughs> anyway, I love these. These are beautiful. I should uh, get out here. <laughs> I've probably four or five years keep telling myself i got to get out here and capture seed. And then fall gets busy and I forget and uh, it goes by. But fortunately, nature takes care of it and keeps reseeding it. This is more of that stuff that I th think is bone set. Uh, what always amazes me about flowering plants is you always think of flowering plants as wanting to be out in the sunlight, out in an open field. You can walk into a heavy canopy place like this and you find all sorts of flowers. And there's been times this summer, as I've been observing uh, pollinator species and honeybees, that I've looked for them out in the open fields and not found them. And I've walked into the woods and found small flowers on the ground here, and they're in those. So uh, it's really interesting how that ecosystem diversity uh, works out in how the pollinators, you know, what they go after and when and where. Um, anyway, I just thought I would show the uh, that there are all sorts of flowers in here underneath the tree canopy as well. Um, although I don't see as many pollinators in here at the moment. Earlier in the season I was. I guess we'll just give you a quick scan of that buckwheat that's in flower now. Multiple plantings. You can see the sweet corn is going through die down most of it. Dying back and uh, ready to crash. And I guess we'll have a look at these squash as they're uh, rolling over for the end of the season. I'm going to come through and harvest out all the squash. There's quite a few underneath that leaf canopy. And then uh, I'll mow this under. And I'll probably run the chicken tractor through here because there's lots of mulch in here and worms and bugs that they can scratch, peck, and eat. So that's good. Uh, looks like this uh, double standard sweet corn, I left a row on the edge here. Looks like we're going to have a decent seed run out of that, so uh, hopefully we can improve that and uh, try and scratch out a good heirloom variety sweet corn that we can run from season to season and not be dependent on hybrids. Chickens uh, were misbehaving the last few days. I left the chicken tractor open and let them uh, range in the fence there and they started escaping from the range zone out to here. And uh, little Miss Specky there, the Specky hen, is the first to escape. She's my uh, Houdini. And then, uh, yeah, go rooster. <laughs> and then uh, she, uh, she uh, you know, set a bad example for the other hens. So then Dovey followed her, and then uh, one of the blonde hens followed her. And then uh, yesterday I come down here, and uh, those three and the rooster were out. So I said, that's enough. So I... Uh, Keep them in the lockdown for a few days. Getting ready to pull the chicken tractor out of here. I guess I should show you that quick. Because uh, they beat this soil straight down. There's another honeybee in the clover. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, they basically chewed this ground down to, uh, you know, as close to matted as a chicken can. Obviously not the real tall stuff that they can't walk on, but um, this area should perform much better next year. And I'm going to skid the tractor up out of here and put them back to work on uh, other parts of the farm. All right, birds. What you doing, Miss Becky? What you got to say? You got any words of wisdom for the camera? Oh, is that right? How about you, Rusta? You got words for the camera? Hmm? No? Okay. So I guess that's uh, pretty much everything for now. Hope you found this interesting or informative. Thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network. Don't forget to like and subscribe if that's your thing. And don't forget to hit the, forget to hit the bell icon if you want to get notifications whenever we upload or go live. Thanks for watching.